Hi guys, welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Marcel. Now, I go by Marcel James, but my legal last name is Littleton. My son's last name is Littleton. Uh, Marcel is my middle name. James is my legal first name. There's a reason I'm telling you all this. I've been going by Marcel James for over 20 years. It had to do with some music projects, and then I went to work at a music retailer, and it was just easier for everybody to not be a Jim or a Jimmy, but be a Marcel. So, And it just stuck. It, it felt right, and it stuck, and that's why I go by the name that I do now. And I, there's a reason I'm telling you this, because today's episode, we're going to talk about aging, aging better, aging differently, the living the NMN lifestyle and how it can impact your aging, how it's impacting mine every single day. And so many viewers out there basically going to also talk about the story arc of this channel and how it's evolved from just telling people about NMN to now protecting the rights of people to take NMN and going to lobby Congress soon uh, with the trade organization in June. So things have really progressed in the past year and a half. But I want to go back. I heard from an uncle of mine recently, an email. Uh, it's my dad's brother. Now, he's 88 years old. Uh, my dad passed away over 20 years ago at age 64. Um, these two men were brothers, genetically similar, and they lived two very different lives. Um, and it's no surprise now that my uncle's still alive and kicking and seemingly doing well. We haven't really connected. We've never been in close contact throughout my life, but we've been in this occasional catch-up you know, contact. And I'm looking back on the situation, and I'm experiencing my situation now, and I'm looking at this and saying, wow, if my dad, who had a rough life, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a bit about him first. My dad was a celebrity. He's from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Not a celebrity in the national sense, but in the local sense, very much so. Um, he started off, he had a TV show. He was into music. He had a TV show. He moved to Endicott, New York, had a TV show up there. Then he was a radio disc jockey for years. I think he went from a club DJ to putting that club DJing thing on TV. They had to pull it off the air because it was a call-in show, and the switchboards got overloaded at the time because so many teenagers were calling in asking for their songs. But we have a picture, a TV guide of him somewhere, the family does, of him and the Jim Littleton show. So if you're an older person in Endicott, New York, you might remember uh, that old show that my dad used to do up there. My dad was then a DJ. He moved to Chicago. Um, he helped Dick Clark with a movie in the late 60s called Psych Out. It actually starred Jack Nicholson. My dad was a DJ at a local radio station. I think it was WCFL. Chicago people will know that station and may or may not remember my dad, but my dad worked with guys like Dick Biondi, who was a famous DJ there. My dad was good friends with him, and uh, he helped with this movie. I don't know, was he a production assistant? I think Dick Clark was friends with the radio station owner or manager, and they said, hey, this guy's a go-getter. Why don't you you know, let him collect some songs for you and help you out with this movie? I think it went along those lines, but... My dad never talked a lot about it a lot because it was a movie about hippies. And while my dad was like a 50s rock guy, he never really got into the hippie culture. So while he was very proud of this letter he got from Dick Clark thanking him for his help with the movie, he didn't talk a lot about it. He didn't boast a lot about it. Um, and I kind of had to pry to find out more about the actual movie uh, growing up. Then my dad got into fishing. I mean, I think he was always a fisherman. And of course, then he became a celebrity fisherman. He was interviewed by magazines. He was on television again. I was on television as a kid fishing with my dad. Um, there was a component of kids at school that would listen to my dad like, you know, guest on the radio every week, like once a week, talking about hot spots to go fishing and hot lures to use. And this little contingent of fishermen's sons at school just thought I was the coolest thing ever because my dad was, you know, Jim Littleton, the fisherman. So, you know, he was always in and around it. Um, the first time I met Bill Clinton, we're not going to get political, but I was a kid. And um, 
you know, not political at all, but my dad was fishing in the Governor's Cup. I think he came in like top two or three. And I went up there and said hello, uh, chatted a bit with uh, with uh, Governor at the time, Clinton. My dad took Senator Pryor, David Pryor, fishing. Um, there were just, you know, he was just always in and around it. Um, my but so he was, yeah, he was a local celebrity. He was, he was always finding his way, you know, doing things. You know, I'm doing this channel. I did some stuff with Stevie Wonder and various musicians living in L.A. So I'm kind of like, you know, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So I'm somewhere in between him and my uncle. Uh, my dad had, you know, worked for 40 years and had 40 jobs. Just couldn't keep a job. Uh, my uncle worked for 40 years and had two jobs. <laughs> he retired from the Air Force, then he retired from the Postal Service. Uh, my uncle was a good man. My uncle um, didn't drink, didn't smoke, went to church, was a great devoted family man. I'm sure still is. Um, in fact, I know he is. And he was, he was a good man, living a good life. You know, He stayed active. He took care of himself for the most part. He liked a good piece of pie, right? But, but he took good care of himself. And it's just no surprise that he's still here. My dad wasn't a bad man. My dad was a troubled man. Um, he just was restless. He, he drank, he smoked, he didn't take care of himself. He was always burning the candle on both ends, and it caught up with him, and eventually caught up with him, and he ended up with disease. But he did some bad things in his life, for sure, and he did some, some good things. But I would define him as a troubled soul, a troubled man. I'll tell you a story. As kids, now I spent half the time around Chicago growing up with my mother and my stepfather and half the time. So I had a different influence, a very stable influence there. And then half the time I grew up in Arkansas in this storm of a house where there was always something going on. And uh, my dad would in the night uh, yell out and he would shout and just curse and use language. You just cover your ears. You know, I had three sisters and they, I know that they'd be covering their ears in the middle of the night. And he was angry at somebody, calling them every name in the book. And this happened over and over and over, year over year over year. And all, none of us could understand who he's yelling at. Like, who are you dreaming about and yelling at? But we never knew. He would never answer. He'd either say, I don't remember, or he just would. And he got uncomfortable. He didn't like it. Um, and a few years ago, before NMN, Okay, I had a shouting match in my sleep and I'm shouting and I'm yelling and I woke up and I had my was just so wide awake. My wife said, are you OK? And I said, she's like, what's going on? And they said, I know who my dad was yelling at all those years. He was yelling at himself. He was berating himself. He was beating himself up every night in his sleep, year over year over year. And I knew it so well in that moment because I was doing the same thing. I was falling into the abyss. I had lost a job you know, that I cared a lot about. My health was declining. I wasn't able to do things with my sons, as I've mentioned here before. Wasn't able to teach them tennis. Wasn't able to get out and exercise properly. Every time I tried, it took me a week or, or more to recover. And, and I just was starting to drink to mask the pain. Never was a smoker, thank God. But I understood. And then I, frankly, to be honest, I sobbed. I sobbed for a good while and just cried. You know, just cried because... I understood finally where his pain was. He wasn't happy with himself, wasn't happy with his life. He, he would keep setting the reset button and end up right where he was before. He never climbed out. So his life ended in, in a crash and burn, right? It was pretty quick. It was pretty abrupt. He got sick a couple years later, fell, passed away. My uncle's life is like most lives. Most of us, fortunately, don't crash and burn, but it happens. Uh, most of us live a managed descent, a steady decline. You know, you're 50, you go see the doctor, okay, it's not going to get any better now. 
You know, the days of that, you know, are over. But we're going to manage this descent, and you can probably live another 30, 40 years. That's the good news, right? But you're going to decline, and you're going to have this, and you might have a hip problem, and you need to be careful, and um, you're not going to be able to exercise like you used to. Maybe you take up golf instead of tennis, whatever the case may be. So when I started taking NMN, I was about to crash and burn. Uh, So for me, it was an intervention that led to other interventions. I had tried many times, as my dad did now, he and he kept landing where he was. And that similar thing was happening to me. I'd try, land where I was. NMN gave me the energy, the focus, the self-confidence for these other wellness activities to stick. They stayed with me. Now, if you look at the arc of this channel, when I started you know, talking a year and a half ago, it was about my experience, my awakening. And then I started seeing your awakenings, and I started reading those and sharing those and interviewing some of you. Then I would share scientific data. I mean, it got to be a hobby in a sense. Lately, it's been scientists and then doctors, doctors who are practicing medicine, functional medicine, and prescribing NMN and watching their patients improve. You know, when we talk to Dr. Xi, it's not just NAD levels going up, but he measures senescence, he measures oxidative stress and inflammation. And these conditions improve. They correlate directly with the NAD levels going up. So we're, we're now we have this scientific evidence, and we're in, now the story arc of this channel is going to Washington with Natural Products Association, Daniel Fabricant. If you haven't yet watched that video, I know it didn't get quite as many views as some, but you got to watch that last video. Former head of FDA supplement programs, Daniel Fabricant, and he literally on air, because I didn't know about this before, invited me to come to Washington to help lobby Congress in three months. What an amazing arc, right? The story arc of this channel. Now, what I'm fighting for, defending, is your right to take the NMN that turned my life around and that's turning the lives around of so many out there. Now, funny thing, a side note about this story, the attorneys are so excited to expose David Sinclair's hypocrisy on this topic because he's talked about giving NMN to his dad as a supplement and how other people can do it and how he's benefited and his dad benefited. And he's talked on Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman, not small outlets. When I go to Congress and we say, hey, this guy trying to take NMN off the market and have it exclusively has been boasting about taking it as a supplement for years, giving it to his own father for years. Now, what about my son's father? And if my dad was still alive, what about him, my father? What about you? What about your father, your kid's father? What about my uncle? Should he not have the right to take NMN2 as a supplement, freely available? Yes, safely available, but freely, widely available and affordable today, not in two years, not in three years. Now, what's the difference maker here, you know, between a managed descent a crash and burn, and an NMN lifestyle intervention. Why is 60 the new 30, the new 40 at least? But in my view, it's the new 30. Why do I say that? I'm not saying I'm going to live 50 years. I could, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying I feel something and others are feeling something. Taking NMN for a while doing this routine, and I'm going to recap this exact routine again because everything is pretty much happens by 1 p.m. It's pretty straightforward. You do these things, you're almost certain to feel better. You would just, it just, and it takes on a life of its own. Then you're just stacking one day over another. But why do I feel like I did when I was 30? Because as they say, it's a young man's world. And when you're 30, you know, it's exciting to be young. Things can only get better. I've got my whole life ahead of me. I'm just getting going. That's how I feel now. That's how I feel approaching 60. And it's hard for me to believe. But I'm looking at you right now telling you my dad's story, my uncle's story, my story. 
how they diverged and how I'm cutting a new path and fighting for your right to cut a new path, frankly. And what it's done for me is turn the clock back, at least mentally, physically, attitudinally, to where I'm looking forward to the future in a way I haven't in 30 years. I'm excited, and I think that's way better than living a managed descent. I think, you know, living in an upswing pattern It's way more exciting. Knowing every month got better. The past 18, 19 months have been taking in them in. Every month I felt better. And now I'm excited for what's coming in six months. When I say got better, I mean less illness. I mean no asthma. I mean no anxiety attacks. I mean I'm fitter. I'm running faster. I'm playing better and better, progressively better tennis. I have played over 100 matches, official matches over the past three years, and I've never once, and it's always in my age group or very close, I've never once played an opponent that was on the upswing. I'm the only person, as I, as I play some of these guys again and again, I see them, I literally see guys declining. And they see me and they go, how are you doing it? You're better. You're getting better. There are a couple guys that offered to video me, by the way, who run a tournament series. They've been watching me for a couple of years. It's a father and son team. And they're like, you're getting better. And then they started watching this channel. They're probably watching right now. Hello, Sebastian. Uh, and they offered to like speak up on my behalf because they see it. They say, your viewers, they, they need to see this. We see it, you know, all the time watching you. And... Um, that's, it's just cool. So I'm going to Washington with Dr. Fabricant to defend your right to have the same 60 I'm about to have in 18 months from now, uh, with excitement, looking forward to it as if you're 30 years old. And hopefully you'll pick a healthy lifestyle. Now my routine, my protocol, I've talked about it before, but I'm going to make it very concise for you right now. I start my day with coffee. It's just how I start it. You might want tea. You might want water. I recommend some hot water if you're just going to have water because it, it frees up your, your sinus and your mucus tracts, your mucus membranes, wakes you up in the, in, the, in the mouth, in the digestive tract. So then you take your NMN. I take it under the tongue. I believe in it. I've talked to Dr. Shi recently about it. And uh, we also, you know, he said reluctantly almost that, yeah, I think it can get into the mucus membranes faster before the digestive tract, and you can get it into your brain faster. And he laid out some, actually some arguments, almost reluctantly, that support sublingual NMN. But if you take it by capsule, fine. I have relatives and friends that take it by capsule. It's just how I take it. It's my routine. Then I do the cold shower. After the warm shower, get all cleaned up, I do cold shower therapy. Then I do the neti pot. Started my 11-year-old, almost 12-year-old son on uh, neti pot. By the way, also giving him vitamins now. And one of those vitamins in this vitamin juice that he takes, uh, it's like a liquid uh, in a bottle, like an old school like vitamin from the pharmacy. And uh, it's got niacin in it and a bunch of other vitamins. And he started feeling better. So I call it his NMN. Uh, but he started doing the neti pot because he's had this constant sinus thing that I had as a kid. And I'm like, son, let me save you 50 years. <laughs> Let me save you, you know, 50 years of my frustration and try this. And four days in a row, pff, cleared out, cleared him out with the neti pot. And, you know, he starts off his day breathing properly. It's a beautiful thing to see your son breathing better. Uh, then I stretch. And I have a 30, 40 minute routine, depending on how long I stretch it out. <laughs> Um, that's posted here, but it's, it's a head to toe stretch. Every part of the body I stretch every day, uh, five, six days a week, but sometimes seven days a week, most days. Then I have my super yogurt, which contains some supplements before, during, after. Again, it's all documented here. Then I'll make a video like this. I just had my super yogurt a little while ago. Um, and then I'll walk, uh, today I'm going to play a little tennis with my boys, uh, or I'll walk and then run. And I run a couple times a week, three miles. 
And I play tennis right now on the weekends, but during the summer, I'll play two, three times a week. And that's my routine. And that's it. And all of that, other than the tennis and sometimes the run, everything's done by one o'clock. And I'm working in between that. So it's not like I'm not productive, but I am dedicated to that. And now you would, if you're, if you're still going to work and you're 50 and you can't do all that in the morning, condense it. Get up a little earlier. You'll feel better. It'll pay off. You'll get to bed earlier. Um, and your life will be better off for it. I can pretty much promise you. I, I just can't imagine it not working why biochemically it would work for me and many of my viewers and not for most of you. Um, if it's not working for you, you know, get your, get your levels checked, get your blood checked, find out what your deficiency is or what else you might be missing. Because this is, this is bioscience. This works, you know, taking care of yourself works. I also eat more fruits and vegetables during the day, nuts, cut out the sugar, cut out m almost all the alcohol and occasional beer, um, cut out most of that stuff. And, uh, and most of the red meat, frankly, I cut out. I still have some fish. I still have some white meat, but, but less and less, more salads, more vegetables. That's it. That's my routine. And I'm living a life that I wish I could go back in time and give it to my dad. I truly do. But the fortunate thing is, you know, as long as we can win when we fight the FDA and fight Sinclair and uh, lobby Congress, as long as we can win, then my son's won't have to suffer the fate of losing their dad early, you know, and I can be more like my uncle, but maybe even, maybe even better. I envision being more energetic, more active. And, um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to catch up with him on a phone call soon. So I'll, I'll make him watch this and then I'll maybe update you with how the last co couple decades have gone for him because we really haven't been in touch much for a while. So it'll be interesting to hear what he's gone through and if he's open-minded to taking an amend, it might be interesting. Thanks for watching. I hope this has inspired some of you guys because the path is worth it. You know, when I invest in NMN, I'm investing in myself. You can take the NMN on taking the same thing. You can save 10%. Code's in the description as always. Um, but yeah, it's, I just, I'd love to, I love the stories of when it works for you guys and I hope to, to see it continuing. Uh, see you guys soon.